All right, we are heading into fall. How cold is it going to get? And what mm -hmm. does winter have in store? Well, the woolly worms might just tell us. And Judy Fraser asked for your reports for the big woolly worm forecast today. And boy, when you put out the call on the World Wide Web, Absolutely. you got a, a lot of woolly worm wranglers. But that's ex that's what I always, <laughs> always called them. I'm a woolly worm patrol. But yeah. we put it out on the World Wide Web, and the response was just enormous and once again I have to thank all of my weather worm wranglers all through central Illinois because yeah. throughout the years they have been just phenomenal about calling in their reports and and uh, we're running we had so many of them we have to we're running them across the bottom of the screen so you can get a chance to see where our reports came from and the color of them we have some yeah. pictures some photographic pictures I think of yeah, some of do. the worms uh, this kind of gives you an idea of our little fuzzy uh, char characters that <laughs> yeah. crawl across our highways in the fall. I think of all the fall fami familiarities, I guess, the you know pumpkins and the apple cider, the woolly worm is the most recognizable. Yeah. And you can see they come in various colors and shapes. And let's see, we've got, I've got the names of these. Carrie and Joyce Richter from Catlin had the dark orange and black. Teresa Lawrence from Ludlow had an orange one. Sarah Morganson from Hoopston, also an orange one that she sent us a picture of. Uh, Heather Roberts. Oh, so. nice. Can I just say, it is hard to photograph a caterpillar when it's moving so quickly yes, across the road. Yes, they move fast, don't they? They're, yes. they're fast little critters on those three <laughs> sets of legs that they have. And then Nicole and Gage Lang from Westville, uh, dark orange and black. Now, where so. did this tradition come from? Well, it's folklore, or in this case, it's mountain lore. This was, uh, oh, this, gosh, this has been around for centuries before the advent of modern weather technology, people used to observe insects, birds, animals because they kind of gave an indication of what the weather was going to be like in the future or what the winter was going to be like. And they had heightened senses. And so I started doing this, uh, oh, probably 35 years ago or whatever, and people would call in their reports. And so then I based the winter weather on um, the reports that people gave me from central <laughs> Illinois. And believe it or not, it's not scientific, it's not meteorological, um, I don't intend to make it that way. But in all those years of collecting woolly worm samples, 80% uh, of the time they were right, 80. generally wow. speaking. 80. Generally speaking. Generally wow. speaking, they were right 80% of the time. Hmm. Well, so maybe that's pretty good. Maybe we don't quite know what's causing that, but, you, but that's a pretty good, <laughs> that's a pretty good uh, rate there. Yeah, 80%. it is. It, it's, a good, it's a good indicator. And obviously we, we look at different things. Uh, when we look at the woolly worm, this is just, this was given to me by... A little model. By uh, <laughs> the woolly worm festival that was in Camargo. And uh, it's kind of a, a <laughs> depiction of what a woolly worm looks like. But uh, what we look for is the color of the coat, the rings or the segments. There's 13 little rings and segments to uh, a woolly worm. Now this one you're looking at, it's kind of interesting. It's got black at the front and black at the end, but in the middle it's brown. So that's an indication in some cases of what the weather is going to be like. And then the thickness, um, how thick, how chubby, how skinny, how skimpy, mm. is it spiky? So these are all of the kinds of things that we look for. Do the worms themselves get bigger or just their coats get fluffier? Their coats get fluffier. Okay. You know, hmm. which is another indicator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of what the, uh, you know, what the winter is going to be. So can they adapt? Because I know that some people on, the, on those Facebook posts were saying, well, this one, it looked a little orange, but it looks like it's getting darker. Yeah, well, sometimes as they age, the woolly worms do change their coat color a little bit. Um, but uh, I look at the ones that are predominant, which start in late August to maybe the middle of September, and that's what I, I look for. And uh, there you can see, now the color of the coat is a really important determining factor. The darker, the general rule of thumb is that the darker the color, the worse the winter. Hmm. The lighter the color, the milder the winter. Um, then you have some, like that one that is orange in the middle or, uh, and dark on either end. Mm -hmm. That's an indicator that the beginning of winter, there's 13 segments on the little worm, each segment representing the 13 weeks of winter. Hmm. So let's say the first four or five segments are black, means it's going to start off doggone cold. No. But the one in the middle is lighter, so that means mm. the bulk of winter will be mild, and then at the end, as we get to spring, it's going to get cold. I feel like you don't see a lot, though, the other way around, that are orange or light brown on the tips and, right. <laughs> yes, and that's beastly true. in the center. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the you know general rule of thumb. The little critters, you 
it's hard to believe they're so small that they have 13 rings, but they do. Little eyes, they can't see very well, but that's why they feel and touch and they, they're kind of crawly. Yeah. So. I had a lady at church ask me how many samples we got in the mail. I was like, no, luckily we didn't get any oh. actual <laughs> living samples in the mail. Yeah, well, that <laughs> happens. I mean, when I first started doing this many years ago, people would bring them in in their Tupperware and their little fruit cars. <laughs> you were saying about that. Yeah. Tell the story about the postman. Oh, and but people would send them little boxes <laughs> and they'd poke holes in them <laughs> so the little guys could breathe and the postmaster general from Champaign post office called me after I'd done it a couple of years and he says Judy would you tell your viewers not to send these little critters through the mail <laughs> and I said why is there a problem and he said they're getting out oh no <laughs> they're crawling out the holes and my <laughs> workers are you know trying to avoid walking on the woolly worms so that actually did happen oh my so goodness I, well you're gonna stick around because we got to get the, the reveal the big result. oh yes yes from all those reports and it's coming up and you're not gonna want to miss it Definitely I guarantee it. not. Well, she is going to come back with the big <laughs> unveiling of the forecast. And we have about 20 minutes. So we're going to make, she's got to make a few final tweets. That's true. That's right. For the reports. Get those few, last few reports in. <laughs> That's right. That's good. Thanks, Judy. Okay. All right.